You can download the answer in the video for free, link in the description. For a simple level select, we will first create a global order load script that we can later refer to from every other script and scene in our game. To know what levels are locked and unlocked, first go to File, New Script, name it Level Manager, and press Create. Inside, we will define three variables and two custom functions. Current level is the level that we are currently playing. This is needed to know what level to load next. Level unlocked is the highest unlocked level, and max level is the maximum level in our game, which we will use to know whether or not to load the next level or to load the credit scene. In my game, has 14 levels. As for the two custom functions, Unlock level will unlock the level that level to unlock is telling us to. In the case that the level that we are trying to unlock is more than the level unlocked variable, which if it is, we set level unlock to the level to unlock variable. And for the load level function, we will make this function equal to a string. So we can make something equal to this function. Then inside, we will check if the level to load is more than the max level, meaning that the level that we are trying to load doesn't exist, which is likely occurring after completing the last level. Then we can either return nothing as this level doesn't exist, or we can return the file path to the credit scene, which you can get the file path to a scene by locating it in the bottom left file system then pressing right click and selecting copy path and then you can use control or command plus v to paste it and because return skips all the code below we don't require using an else statement and can instead just provide the location of the level scene in the file system which for simplicity i recommend having a folder for your levels then having each level scene's name being the number of what the level is then you can provide the location of the levels folder the name of the level to load using the level to load variable and then .tsen as that is a file type of the level that we are trying to load additionally we use str to allow us to use the number from the level to load variable inside this string now to make this a global script, allowing it to be checked and edited from other scripts in our game, and allowing it to keep the value of the variables despite changing scenes. Go to Project, Project Settings, then under Globals, Auto Load, select the folder icon, then select the Level Manager script, and press Open. This is the name that we will use to refer to in the script to grab any data from this script, then press Add. Additionally, you can change the name if you want to by double clicking it, and you can remove or disable this global script on the right. Now, inside of the Finish flag or whatever you use to complete the level, we will first grab the Level Manager script and increase the current level, then we will grab the Level Manager script again and call the unlock level function, passing the current level. This is so we can unlock the new level that we are up to inside of our level select. Then for loading the next level, we'll create a variable called level to load, which will use the load level function, passing the new current level that we are up to. And because this function provides a string, we are able to check if it is an empty string, meaning that the level doesn't exist, and therefore use return to skip all the code below. Or in the case that it does exist, we can use get tree to grab the core of the scene, then call deferred to activate the change scene to file function at the end of the current frame, passing the level to load variable, which holds the file path of the new scene that we are trying to change to. Now for the level select, we will create a new scene with a no 2D as the core. Right click, rename, rename it to level select, and go to scene, in save as, and save it. I'll first create a title for the level select, add a label node to the scene. I will set the text to level select, the alignment on the horizontal and vertical to center, the size to 1280 by 220, and the font size to 160. Keep in mind that you can change any of these values as you would like based on the size of your game screen. Then for the various level buttons, I will add a center container to the scene. A center container is a container that will take all of its children that are control inherited or nodes with green icons and reposition them to the center position of this container, which I will set its size to 1280 by 500 and its position to 220 on the y-axis so that it takes up all the leftover space from the label. I will then add a grid container as a child of the center container, which a grid container is a container that takes all of its children that are controlled inherited or nodes with green icons and separates them based on the grid using the amount of columns. And we will come back to this node later. As for the level select buttons, we will create a scene that we can use and duplicate for ease. Create a new scene with a button node as the core. Right click, rename, rename it to level select button, then go to scene, scene save as, and save it. For my buttons, I will set their custom minimum size to 150 by 150, so that all my level select buttons are the exact same size, and I will also set the font size to 90. Again, keep in mind that you can change any of these values as you would like to whatever suits your game. Then select the level select button, and add a script. Inside, we will define two variables. Level is the level that this button will load, and is unlocked is whether this button is unlocked or not. Then inside of the built-in ready function, we will set the level to the index of this node, plus one. The index is basically the node's position in the scene tree, with zero being at the top amongst the other children of the same parent, and because 0 is the topmost node, we must add 1, as the first level in our game is level 1 and not level 0. Then we set the text of this button to a string conversion of the level variable, then we set is unlocked, based on if this level is less than or equal to the level manager's level unlocked variable, and for the visuals of us being unlocked or locked, I'm simply halving the opacity on this button if it's locked. Then inside of the builds and press function, we will first check if we are unlocked, if so, then we update the level to the current level that this button represents, then we will use get tree to grab the core of the scene, then call deferred to run the change scene to file function at the end of the current frame. Then we pass the file path of the level that we are trying to load, which we get through the load level function. Additionally, we use call defer to change the scene to the level scene at the end of the current frame as to avoid potential errors. Now back inside the level select menu, we can drag and drop the level select buttons into the grid container. Then while the level select button is selected, we can use control or command plus D to duplicate it, which because there is 14 levels in my game, I will duplicate it 14 times. And don't worry about the text for the number as we are setting that automatically in the code. Additionally, because we're using a grid container, we'll change the columns to seven so all the level buttons 
icons fit properly, as there is 14 levels in my game, and there is only enough space to show 14 levels. Then under theme overrides, constants, you can change the amount of separation between each level select button for both the horizontal and vertical. Now you have a simple level select menu that you can enter any of your Godot games. And don't forget, you can check out the project files, link in the description.